In fall of 2006, the Boston University School of Public Health convened a Danish-style consensus conference on the topic of human biomonitoring. Consensus conferences are a way to learn from members of the general public their concerns regarding how we, as a society, should use specific scientific innovations and technologies. Consensus conferences are also a good way to inform the public about such scientific and technological issues. This consensus conference model seemed like a really good idea. It just seems like every uh, decision that gets made uh, these days in our society, you know, it doesn't, doesn't really include people's opinions, the everyday, the average person. And uh, you got a small group of people making decisions for everybody else. Uh, it's very easy to, for the interest to be really narrow and, and not really reflect everyone's uh, concerns and you know, different issues. Biomonitoring simply tells you a certain level of a chemical in the body and it could be using things such as saliva or blood or your hair. It doesn't tell you what that means and I think we all came to find out that that's an, a critical issue at this time. Biomonitoring is commonly used to gather data in environmental health studies. The United States Centers for Disease Control and Prevention also has a biomonitoring surveillance program that looks at a sample of U.S. residents to measure chemicals in their bodies. Some states are now considering similar programs. It's great to be here today to sign SB 1379 a biomonitoring bill that will help improve public health. California became the first to set up a statewide biomonitoring surveillance program when Governor Schwarzenegger signed the bill in September 2006. Environmental health advocacy groups also use biomonitoring, often testing smaller groups of ordinary and high-profile people to show evidence of chemical pollution in humans. The chemical industry has concerns about this use of biomonitoring by advocates, suggesting that it causes unnecessary public alarm. Biomonitoring is really important right now because the average person has become so aware of things such as environmental pollution, chemicals in foods. We all hear about you know, how many new chemicals every year are being put into our, our water supply, our food supply, medications, things of that sort. And on a more global level, I think people are becoming aware that we're even impacted by other countries. In short, the issue of biomonitoring is hot. There are many open questions about how and why to use biomonitoring, under what circumstances, and whether or not results should be communicated to people who participate in biomonitoring studies and surveillance programs. And if such results are communicated, how? These are questions that should be of concern to all people, not just scientists and policymakers. Consensus conferences are used by the Danish government to gather informed citizen input on policies involving complicated scientific and technological issues. The Boston Consensus Conference was designed with a similar purpose to inform scientists at the BU School of Public Health and beyond policymakers, environmental advocates, and industry about issues raised by members of the general public with respect to human biomonitoring. In order to get such input, the process required educating members of the public about the science and social context of biomonitoring. It's not often that uh, everyday folks get to give their input about such a uh, kind of a faraway issue. You know, um, yeah, I think it was, it was really good timing because uh, it's good to make these decisions ahead of, ahead of time after, you know, after it's implemented, after the programs and policies have been implemented, it's too late. You can't take into account people's concerns and, uh, you know, and, and, and systems are already in place and all that. So uh, I, I felt like it was a, 
it was the right time to uh, involve um, a lay panel. The consensus conference process involves recruiting a group of people whose demographics roughly reflect a certain geographic area. This lay panel meets over three weekends to learn about the issue, ask their own questions about it, and ultimately come to their own conclusions and recommendations using a consensus-based process. The Boston Consensus Conference organizers recruited a lay panel of 15 people from the Boston area by posting ads in local newspapers and the online posting board Craigslist, hanging flyers and handing out postcards. The group more or less reflected the demographics of the city of Boston in terms of gender, age, race and ethnicity, and income. Members of the lay panel gathered for two full weekend meetings in October and November. They read background articles and discussed them. They heard from two experts each weekend, and with the help of a team of professional facilitators, they worked to define their key concerns about biomonitoring. At the end of this process, the panel had a list of questions they wanted to have addressed so they could write their consensus statement on biomonitoring. The process culminated in a third weekend meeting in December 2006. On the first day, a Saturday, a panel of six experts addressed the previously prepared questions of the lay panel. The expert panel included scientists, a health law attorney, and representatives from state government, a chemical industry trade group, and an environmental advocacy organization. The experts received their questions ahead of time and answered them in short presentations, after which the lay panel and members of the audience asked further questions. How would you be able to, to close the gap between determining what's in people's bodies and being able to explain to them what that means? Closing that gap is going to take a very long time. In part, I tried to kind of show you in a nutshell the number of chemicals that we have in the environment that are approved for commercial use and how little we actually know about how they impact health. But I always assume, you know, that you just couldn't give my information out. Why will people give up information if you can breach it? Yes, yeah, so one way to look at this, and it's not entirely clear that the law would look at it, is mm -hmm. is this a contract? And as a, as a term in a contract, someone has made a promise to you, mm -hmm. and it's a breach of that contract, in which case you'd have an action for breach of contract as a subject. The second day of the final weekend, the lay panel took this information and summarized its findings and recommendations in a written consensus statement. The statement was presented to the public on the final morning of the conference. Panelists read the consensus statement and then answered questions from the audience. This is a consensus conference, and it's, if not a unique event, it's not unique because actually there has been at least one other Danish-style consensus conference uh, in the United States prior to this about 10 or 12 years ago. But it's uh, maybe not unique, but highly unusual. Uh, the idea is to harvest the wisdom uh, regarding uh, their perspective on a difficult technological problem. If you wanted to know what ordinary people thought about that, about the only way that you could do that was to have a focus group or to uh, conduct a poll or a survey of the general public. And then you would be getting information from people who really didn't know very much about the topic, hadn't formed an opinion about it, and hadn't thought about it very much. So a consensus conference is a small step to remedying this defect in democratic decision making by investing a substantial amount of time and a substantial amount of effort and resources to acquainting a cross-section of the community uh, with the topic and then harvesting their perspective and their responses in the form of a document. 